Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about how you can use distributed caching using Redis in an ASP.NET Net Core project. So let's get started. First, you need to install this Microsoft Extensions Caching Redis package into your application. Then you need to add a service extension called Add Distributed Redis Cache. Uh, after that, you need to set options. Uh, this is the pass or configuration for your Redis. If you are using uh, Redis in a remote location, you need to put the port and IP here. But in my case, I am using Redis locally in my local host. So local host would suffice. And, and next, you need to set the instance name. Uh, it will only add a prefix to all the keys you are going to create in your Redis database. It's not going to create an, a new instance of uh, Redis database. Just adds the prefix to every key that you are later going to use. So that's all you need to do. Next, let's use a razor page. And of course, you, are, you can use the controllers uh, or a console app for that matter but um, here we are going to use razor pages and the only thing i need to do here is to inject an interface of i distributed cache uh, to my razor page then i can set and get uh, keys just like this so i'm going to try and get the value of last time from redis database in first uh, execution of the application you have no data in last time so the result would be null and if that's the case we are going to uh, find what is the time of the day and save it to cache using cache set i am using the cache set for byte arrays but you have an option to use cache and set a string this will set uh, the key of last time into Redis as an string but in more advanced scenarios you are going to use byte arrays and that's what uh, we are doing here um, I'm just using encoding UTF-8 to get bytes and then uh, using distributed cache entry options I am setting the absolute expiration for 10 seconds so every time we create uh, this key inside redis database it's only valid for 10 seconds and after 10 seconds it would be re removed or null uh, the next calling so uh, that's all uh, we are doing here and that's it uh, next time when we refresh the page we are not going to hit this part of the code because the data is cached and, and this is not null and so we are going to come here and get data from uh, this key uh, from Redis and show it to the user uh, just like this so let me show you how is the page that's it just uh, the last time and we are done so let's run the application I start without debugging and we are up and we are running let's see if there's an error okay we have an error because my redis server is not running so uh, let's go to my wsl ubuntu and run the server so I'm here and I'm going to use sudo service or I can just go with the server. I don't know why I'm making things more complicated than it is. So my ready service is running right now and let's refresh the page. This time we don't get any errors. And if I check my logs here, it says time cache to Redis. And if I refresh the page, uh, it's already 10 seconds gone and uh, I get a new time but between these 10 seconds each time I refresh the page and uh, nothing changed in my last time value so for 
every 10 seconds we have a value cached and after that we lose it we cache again and that's pretty much how caching works uh, but we are using a distributed cache it's uh, uh, can be separated in a different server and uh, we call it every time we need a value also you can save data inside your hard disk using redis caching system and that will help a lot with persistence and performance so that's it for today thanks for watching and uh, please like share and subscribe next video i'm going to talk about how you can use docker instead of wsl to run redis and uh, cache uh, see you soon